This is the one I like. Great. You've selected our brand. Oh, good. Mm. Uh, just a moment. We must take the picture. All right, Joe. Make it snappy. All right. This way, please, Miss Courtney. This way? Yes, please. All right. Stale. Stale. Oh. Is that all? Yes, that's all, Miss Courtney. And thank you very much. Heavens, I'm glad I picked the right cigarette. So are we. I still can't believe it's the right one. I have a genius for never doing anything I'm supposed to do. When will this great advertisement come out in the magazine? Probably the January issue. Oh, not till then. It usually takes about five months. Uh, well, will I have to wait until January for the check? Oh, no. Oh, you'll get that in two or three days. And listen, for heaven's sake, when you write advertisement, don't put in all that sickening stuff about uh, society, old New York family, social register, and all that rot. Couldn't you just say, uh, Miss Nancy Courtney of New York City? Wouldn't that be enough? Well, we'll try. Your mother seemed to think that we ought to put in something about your family, your grandfather, your great-grandmother. Uh, yes, she would. Is it all over, dear? Yes, Mother. Good afternoon, Miss Courtney, and thank you again. Thank you. Come on, boys. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, thank you. Thanks so much, Miss Gordon. Did you get the check? They're sending it. Where are you going? I'm going to look uh, for an evening coat at Turner's. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, what? That DeWitt friend of yours telephoned he'd meet you there. Any objections? No. And I suppose you've forgotten that Norman Cravath is coming here for tea. No, I haven't forgotten. Anything else? No. Oh, Mother darling, for heaven's sake, don't worry. I'll do what you want me to do. What I want you to do? Dear, how can you say such things? I said don't worry. Good afternoon, Miss Courtney. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Well, I doubt it. <laughs> you suppose I can find a decent evening coat here? Well, we can always try. I can't find a thing in town. I think of wearing. We've got a match, do we? Want one? Yeah. What do you think of that one? Rather nice. Come here, will you? Turn around. You needn't look so cross about it. You're not doing me a favor, you know. I think that's perfectly charming. Oh, I think it's too awful for words. Never mind. Hello, Germaine. What are you doing in town in August? Just a little shopping tour. No. Nancy, you're not going to buy that thing, are you? Why not? Darling, it doesn't become you. I think I'll take this one. Take yourself, dearie. I wish I could afford one. No, it's too bad about you. Do it. Give the poor starving lady a quarter. Oh, Miss Prentice, Mr. Taylor. Oh, yes? See you at the Cummings tonight? I doubt it. But Norman said... I thought I'd give Norman a rest tonight. That's very kind of you, I'm sure. See you later. Why don't you telephone him? Shall I send it, Miss Courtney? Could I get it this evening? Oh, it's awfully late. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'll just take it with me, then. Something nice for you to carry, darling. Yeah, hold that for me. Who was that? That? <laughs> That's one of my dearest friends. I wish I could afford one. My father's O.T.F. printed. Well, what's he do? Well, a little of everything. He owns buildings and magazines. Oh, really? What magazines? Well, Vanity Bazaar, for one. Excuse me, Miss Courtney, this is a charge, isn't it? Yes, of course. Thank you. Help me on, Louis. Yes, and don't let me catch you making up for that white vase. It's because our father owns magazines. I'm not in the habit of getting my stories published that way. Well, lots of writers are. <laughs> Come on, let's look around. Oh, I'll be down on the first floor when the package is ready. Thank you, Miss Courtney. I wish I could up. Really, what a... That's the perfect gem, Mr. Cravat. Of course, I want something very, very distinctive. Oh, but of course, Mr. Cravat. Something no one else would have. Well, I, 
I don't think you'll do much better than that, sir. No. Well, let me look at the other one. Good afternoon, Miss Prentice. Oh. This thing's stopped again. Uh, may I see it, please? Well, I wish you'd fix it so that... Norman. Oh, hello, Germain. Just choosing a cigarette case. How much do you say this one was? It's 800, Mr. Clavette. 800? Mm. You haven't a cigarette, have you, Norman? Oh, I certainly have. Is this nicer than the funny cigarettes with the cases? That's a little specialty we have, Miss Prentice. For $800, you get the case and 10 Fatimas. Now, is that interesting? <laughs> I, uh... <sighs> I think I'll buy this one. Oh, but Mr. Crevasse. Uh, I like Fatima's. Oh, but I'm afraid Mr. Crevasse wants that one. Surely not if I want it too. Oh, no, no. No, of course not. Goodbye, Germain. I'll be in again. Oh, no. Why aren't you coming tonight? Well, I'm sorry, but I can't. Why? I have another engagement. With Nancy? I think it's very mean. I tell you, I think it's terribly mean. I come all the way in from Southampton. You don't let's have an argument here. Here's your case. Why didn't you answer my letter? I didn't have anything to say. Will you telephone me? Yes. No, you won't. You said that before. Why didn't you answer my letter? Please, your maid. Will you telephone me? Yes. Ah, oh, this looks more human. Let's see. There. But that's divine. We'll take this one and, uh, would you throw that away, please? Hey, that's my hat. I know it. Excuse me, Miss Courtney. Could I speak to you a minute? What about? Where's my coat? It's about that. You see, the credit manager. What have I got to do with the credit manager? Where is my coat? Well, there must be some mistake, Miss Courtney. But would you talk to him a minute? I'll do nothing of the sort. I never heard of such a thing. Where's Mr. Turner's office? And what's your name? This isn't my fault, Miss Courtney. I don't care whose fault it is. Mr. Turner's office is on the top floor. I'm sure it can be straightened out. Well, I'm sure it'd better be. I beg your pardon. Yes? Oh, ask her to come in. Well, this is a great store you've got here, I must say. Hello, Nancy. What's on your mind? Ben, I'm really curious. Of course you are. It's an awful store. We cheat the life out of... Oh, no, Ben. But I don't think I should be subjected to insults by your clerks. Oh, come now, Nancy. I don't believe a clerk would insult you. Well, she did, and I wish you'd have it discharged. Why, of course I will. Um, what was it about? I really don't know. I didn't listen. I know that I've ordered an evening coat, and I should like to take it home. And you shall take it home. What's to hinder? Oh, something about a credit manager. Oh, Credit manager, please. This is Mr. Sterner, Jr. talking. What's this about Miss Courtney? Well, that's the bunk. You had no right to do such a thing. Thank you, Ben. Do you mind if I say something, Nancy? Go ahead. How long are you going to keep this up? What do you mean? Aren't you riding for a fall, Nancy? Sooner or later. Is it worth it? What else can I do, Ben? You know how I was brought up. The cottage must have the best of everything. Then when Father died and we were broke, we were still the cottage. Taking, sponging on everybody. I used to cry my heart out I was so humiliated by. But you know what this town is. Pretty soon I didn't mind anymore. Oh, come, Nancy. You've got better stuff in you than that. Well, I used to think so, Ben, but... 
I don't know more. All we do is go along getting what we can, all we can. Just waiting for poor Aunt Julie to die and leave us the money. It's pretty rotten, Ben. And don't you think I don't know it? Um, what about Norman Cravat? Never mind, Ben. Ah, don't you bother your head about me. Well, uh, I'll be running along. Goodbye. Thank you so much, Ben. Oh, Ben, don't bother to discharge the clerk this time. I may have been in the wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. The customer is always right. <laughs> so long. Goodbye. Hurt you. Yeah, but what for? Oh, I don't know. It's sort of quiet. What were you crying about? You. Thanks. Am I that bad? I pray that you'd always be the same. Me? No matter what happened to me. Oh, I love you so. The witch. What? I'm going to have to marry Norman. It's the only thing left to do. We owe money to everybody in town. We haven't got a cent. Do it, I'm desperate. Yeah, I, I know, but... If it wasn't for Mother, I wouldn't do it. But I can't go on like this. You don't blame me, do you? Do you? No, of course not. Oh, don't say it like that. Do it. If I married you, it would be dreadful for both of us. I oh, know. I don't love Norman. I love you. I'll always love you. That's why I pray that you wouldn't change. You mean so much to me. You're the only real thing in my life. You must believe that. You're the only thing that isn't connected with money. You're the only thing I want. Let's get out of here. without being announced. I've tried being announced. It amounts to $1,295. I don't know anything about any bills. My daughter takes care of all that. Where can I find your daughter? My daughter is out of town. Oh, good afternoon, Norma. Hello, Mrs. Courtney. <laughs> oh, pardon me. You'll excuse us, won't you? Where did you say I might find your daughter? I said my daughter was out of town. Good afternoon. What's her address out of town? Won't you please leave? I think you better leave. I said I think you better leave. I'll put this in the hands of our attorneys tomorrow. Excuse me a moment. Uh, just a minute. What is the bill? $1,295. Dresses for Mrs. Courtney since last November. 
Well, do you want to check now? Yes, sir. Let me see the bill. Hello, Norman. Hello, Nancy. What's going on? Oh, nothing. This gentleman is soliciting for a charity. Oh? May I see? That charity doesn't need any help. Nancy, that's foolish. At least you might think of my pride. Now, don't be upset about my being here. I'm going right away, and you can be alone. Oh, I don't care whether we're alone or not. Oh, my dear, don't talk like that. You know. Yes, I know. You don't have to tell me. Can I come in? Well, I don't know. What do you think? I think I'd better come in. If we give you tea, will you promise not to offer to pay for it? Out. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? No. <laughs> I hope you don't mind my rushing right off, but my sister Julia isn't at all well. Oh, it's too bad. Nothing serious, I hope? No, it's never serious, worse luck. Oh, and Nancy doesn't mean that. Oh, I don't. If that old tightwad would just pass out. Oh, Nancy, dear. Your aunt is a very sick woman. Oh, really? How sick? <laughs> You're absolutely inhuman. Of course I am. Don't believe her, Norman. She really loves her aunt dearly. <laughs> I'm sure she does. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, it makes me simply furious, Aunt Julia, with all that money and... And what? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, would you like some tea, or would you rather have a scotch and soda? Neither, thanks. Will you have one? <laughs> yes, I'm sort of shot. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I've been shopping. Yes? Yeah. Mm. Oh, dear. What? The witch walked off with my new evening coat. The witch? <laughs> Why do you laugh? I don't know. Seems sort of funny, a man shopping in the afternoon. I mean, not working. You know what I'm going to do someday? I'm going to build a building that'll make those look like shacks. That's what I'd like to do. Build something. Something beautiful. Those are pretty beautiful as they are. Yeah, somebody else built them. I want something that's entirely my own. A Norman crevasse building. Something you can see for miles. Something will be there after I'm gone. I'll have the money for it too in a couple of years. You seem awfully sure. Of course I'm sure. You don't start with nothing the way I did and run it up to eight million dollars without being sure of something. There's one thing I'd like to be sure of, though. Yes? I picked up some land out on Long Island today. About 50 acres, near Westbury. What are you going to do, grow cabbages? No. I thought I might want to build a house. Norman, what on earth do you want with a house? Oh, I don't know. Tired of living at the club? Lonely? No. I thought it might be fun to have a house. I see, sort of a nest. Well, uh, yes. And who's going to lay the eggs? Eggs? Or perhaps you're going to buy your eggs. Well, 
There are some things money can't buy. <laughs> I know the answer to that one. Oh, uh, you do. What do you think you'll start to build? That depends. On whether there's one thing that money can't buy? Yes. Norman. What? Do you want to marry me? Yes. Why? Because I love you. All right. Let's get married. You will? Of course. Darling. I'm glad that's over. Don't tell me you were afraid I wouldn't marry you. Well, no. I thought not. It was the one thing I needed. You needed me? Yes. Now I have everything I want. You have? Yes. Now I've got the world licked. Norman. Yes? Eh? Will you do me a favor? Anything, up to eight million dollars. Is that the valuation? I was just joking. What favor? Will you marry me right away? Well, tonight? No, tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon. What time shall I call you? Noon. Not before noon. Not a minute before. All right. I'll have a million things to do. Wait till you see your ring. I picked it out this afternoon. Oh, Judas. What? Wait till Germaine hears of this. Huh. I can hardly wait. I feel sort of sorry for her. Yes, look what she's missing. Goodbye, Mrs. Cravath. Miss Cosney to you, please. Goodbye, Mrs. Cravath. Well, spring seven nine nine seven zero, please. Come in. You. What's the idea? The idea is to get out of here. How much money have you got? A dollar. Oh, that's all right. I can cash check downstairs. I can't have dinner with you tonight. Why not? Because I've got another engagement. Oh, no, do what you haven't. Listen, darling. Tomorrow I become Mrs. Cravat. Tonight you and I are going somewhere we've never been before. And somewhere we'll never go again. You're going to do wonderful things. Great things. Oh, Louis, I'm going to be so proud of you. And you? Oh, I'll make out all right. Sure, you'll make out. But the trouble with your folks. They make out. They're successful. There's nothing real about them. They don't know anything about life. I know, but don't you see? Sure, I see. You're going to spend the rest of your life with a lot of rich, successful people. People who don't know the beauty of poverty. People who don't know anything about real love. It's the only life I've ever known, Louis. Except for you. That's why I'm so thankful. Read the little bit of you that I've had. That's why I want you to know that I'll always hold on to the memory of you. I can always go back to that church and get the tree. You'll need it. Yes. I don't know what this marriage is going to be like. It's not going to be easy. You know that, don't you, darling? It won't be so hard. You'll have your money. Don't say things like that. 
You'll think of me, too, won't you? No. This whole thing might make a very good play. Uh, don't make a play out of it. That was party. You'll never spoil it. So quiet. So peaceful. Oh, do wish. I'm going to miss you so. But we'll see each other. No. This must be the end. But all the rest of my life, I should have this time. I should have you in my heart. Oh, darling. The witch. This. The boy just brought up tomorrow morning's papers. Yes, I had one. Very nice, don't you think? Mrs. Norman Cravath. Don't you get quite a kick out of that? Well, Mrs. Cravath, everything all right? Didn't the boy bring up those vases? Oh, it doesn't make any difference. There are too many flowers as it is. Uh, when I pay for something, I expect to get it. Yes. What's the matter? Nothing. Happy? Yes. How about some music on our wedding night?
Good evening, Albert. Good evening, Mr. Taylor. Nice evening. Yes, sir. And are you the worm? Do I look like a worm, do we? You certainly don't. I'm glad you're so early. I want to talk about your play. I read it last night. I think it's too marvelous for words. Did you really like it? Oh, I loved it. It's divine. How soon will it be produced? Well, that depends on whether I can find somebody to put up the money for it. Oh, but of course you can find somebody. This father, for instance. Don't you remember what he said to you way back last fall when I just took you in to meet him about writing a play? I know, but I hate to have you do anything more for me. Don't be silly. Why shouldn't I? I'm going to be awfully proud of you someday. Someday? I'm proud of you now, stupid. Come on, let's talk about your play before everybody comes. I want you to change one thing in the first act. Who's coming tonight? I've got a surprise for you. Who? You'll find out. Yoo-hoo! Are you busy, darling? I'll be soon, another mother. Darling. I'm just on my way to Aunt Julia's. No. What's the matter with her? Well, I don't think she's anything to see her yet, but you never can tell. Well, that's a hopeful way to look at it, anyway. Oh, you shouldn't say such things, especially if we don't need Aunt Julia's money now. No, we never needed it more. What do you mean? Is Norman in any trouble? No, but I am. Oh, if I just have some money of my own. But what's all that for? Norman gives you everything? That's just it. Norman gives me everything. And there hasn't been a day in the six months that I've been married to him. But he hasn't made me feel conscious of what he's done for me and what he's done for you. What? Has he said anything about me? No, of course not. But he's got us both so indebted to him that I can't fight anymore. Fight? For what? But for myself, for what I used to be. For Nancy Courtney. There isn't a Nancy Courtney anymore. There's Mrs. Norman Cravath, and I'm sick of her. Well, you're not thinking of leaving him. Oh, oh, you couldn't be. I don't know. Have you been seeing that writer lately? I haven't seen him since we were married. Who's that? Oh, oh, nobody, no, nobody at all, uh, Norman, we, and uh, Nancy and I were just talking. Aren't we going to be a little late? Tell me, it's at 8.30 to you know. I don't think I'll go. I'd like to leave in five minutes. <laughs> I'm afraid I've uh, made Nancy late. I'll be running right along. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. I'll, uh, I'll telephone you about Aunt Julia. Uh, <laughs> goodbye, Norman. Goodbye. Right. Yeah. Please, dear, won't you hurry? I said I'm not going. Well, isn't it rather late to decide that? Oh, Norman, I don't feel well. I haven't felt well all day. Why, what's the matter? I don't know. Oh, you feel all right when you get to the party. Come along, darling. I'm not going. Oh, 
All right, we won't go. We won't do anything, of course, you don't want to do. We won't consider my feelings in the matter. If you're really sick, why don't you go to bed and we'll have a doctor? Oh, I'm not sick. Well, I don't understand you. I try to give you everything that will make you happy and comfortable. I'm grateful, Norman. Oh, I don't mean that. But here's something you know I want to do. All right, I'll go. No, I don't want you to come out of gratitude. I said I'd go. I think that perhaps would really be better, dear. Five minutes. We won't wait any longer. She's always late. It's such be absurd. I'm so sorry. I'm awfully ashamed about this. I'm simply starving. I know. It's dreadful. Well, the late Mr. and Mrs. Cabal. Hello, Jermaine. How are you? We the last to arrive? You certainly are. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, sorry, it's my fault. Oh, that is isn't that Norman. You know it was my fault. <laughs> I expected it, dearie. Right. Oh? I've got an old friend of yours here tonight. Yes? Oh, DeWitt. Hello, DeWitt. Good evening, Nancy. You haven't seen each other for a long time, have you? And this is Mr. Cravath, Mr. Taylor. Hello there. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. How's the writing going? Very well, thanks. Good. But wait. I want you to talk to the Countess Selena. She's crazy about that last story of yours. You know, his writing seems to be coming along very well indeed. What do you think, Tom? Franklin Norman, I'm worried to death. About consolidated? About everything. Every stock on the board is too high. I can't see that at all. The country's too prosperous. Oh, we've got the world licked. Well, I hope you're right, Norman. Of course I'm right. Have you really missed me? Of course. Why didn't you come down that time, last November, when you called me up? I couldn't. Why not? You ought to know. You play very well, don't you? Backgammon? Any game. What game, Princess? Well, for instance, social game. Oh, really? How long has this been going on? I... I don't think I understand. I don't think you want to understand. Oh, look what you've changed. Have I? Have you? I... I don't think so. Don't you know? Well, everybody changes. No. That isn't true. I haven't changed. To win. I haven't changed. TPM 91 and three quarters. Are you 12 and a half? I speak 91 and three quarters. AO Debbie 246 and a quarter. SW 42. CN 16 and a half. AWW 55. GOR 46 and 3 quarters, NPL 33 and 1 quarter, FHK 22 and a half. Well, we've still got our health. And? Don't know anyone that wants a good office boy, do you? Don't anybody want to buy a nice house out on Long Island? Just finished? Twelve guest rooms. 
What are you doing down here? I had to come, Norman. Why, uh, what's the matter? Our marriage. Oh, please, not today. Yes, today, now. No, I, I don't want to talk about it today. But why not today as well as any other day, Norman? Then there's something I've been trying to say to you for some time, but you wouldn't listen to me. Now you've got to. Well? I'm going to leave you, Norman. You certainly picked on a good day to quit. Isn't it better to quit than to go on like this? I've tried to make a go of it. That's not fair. Oh, yes, it is. But I can't stand it any longer. I know it's my fault. I should never have married you. But I was desperate. Well, it hasn't left me any self-respect at all. I just can't stand by and watch my mother and... heaven knows who else plunge on you. I thought I was hard enough to do it without hating myself. But I can't bear it any longer. I see. How about me? You're not losing anything, Norman. You've got everything that means most to you. You've got your money, your ambition. Where did this big feeling first hit you? This feeling about your self-respect. I've had it ever since the first night we were married. I made up my mind today at Aunt Julia's funeral. How much did Aunt Julia leave you? No, Norman. Please, you must believe me. She left me nothing. She left everything to charity, except just enough to take care of Mother. Well, what are you going to do? I don't have to worry about Mother now, so I'm free. I'm going to do what I never had the courage to do before. I'm going to the man I love. We'll get by somehow. All right. Get out. Take your self-respect with you. Go to your writer. I've left Norman. For good? For good. Why? I told you the other night I hadn't changed. Oh, yes, I know, but... But how about money? How about your mother? Oh. Your mother's all right. Aunt Julia died. Mother's got so much money, she's going around the world. Oh, I'm so glad it's all over. It wasn't easy. Norman... What did Norman say? Nothing. But he looked so... So... Oh, the way. <laughs> Have you got a drink, darling?
the whip. Do you know what I want to do tonight? I want to go down to that beach. I want to hear that gypsy orchestra. Uh, I don't think that's open now. But it'll have to be open. Oh, if you knew how I've dreamed of that place. I'm afraid I haven't any white rock. The whip. Matter. Plain water will do. I'll get it done. I have to leave Norman to it. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. Um. It would have to be you. Waiting for Norman? No. Waiting for me? Yes. Suppose I didn't come. What do you want? Was that an old fashioned? Come on, let's get out. There's too much ermine in here. Let's go where there are only poor people. Is this? Any ermine in here? <laughs> Tony, any ermine? Ermine? I ain't seen him. <laughs> this be all right? <laughs> what are you going to have, folks? Bring me an old fashioned. Old fashioned? Too, Tony. Too old fashioned. Norman. I don't know. He took an awful beating this afternoon. I read about it. Let's get him. Let's cheer him up. I can't. I've left him. Well, you certainly picked a good time. I didn't know anything about his crash. Go back to him. I can't. Why not? I can't. Oh, you and your pride. Oh, I know. Don't, Ben. What's the matter with me, anyway? I try to do what I think is right. Well, you know best. No, that's just it. I don't. If I did, I wouldn't make such a mess of things. But if I don't know right, who does, Ben? Don't ask me. If I love somebody, that isn't my fault. 
Oh, I'm all mixed up. Who is this that you love? Nobody. You want to talk anymore? No. I want to get drunk. Good old Nancy. She means well. Hello there, Major. Hello. You've got a lot of nerve coming here tonight. What do you expect me to do? Roll into the hole? Well, I should say not. I'll tell you something else, Norman. I think we'll just about pull through this thing. Well, of course we'll pull through. I'm not licked by a darn sight. I think Henderson and Tompkins will lay off you for a while. How about the banks? How do you stand with old man Sterner? I'm going right from here to see Ben. I'll get him to talk to his father in the morning. Fine. How's Nancy, baby? All right. No quitter of that girl. Wait a little while longer. Yes, sir. Love me, kid? Sure. Well, what are you all in black for? Somebody died? Yes, I died. Do you want to come to the funeral, Al? You bet. It's going to be a great funeral. We're going to have real Hungarian music.
I see you for a minute, then. Let's have a little family conference. I'd rather see you alone, if you don't mind. Well, let's go in the other room. Come on in and see you. Hey, Ben, how about something to drink? Uh, Jenkins, drink. Jenkins, big drink. I think that you're wrong. She needs you badly. I never want to see her again. But look here, Norman. She hasn't done anything. She didn't even know you were broke. Yeah, I'd rather not talk about it. But Judas to Judas. I know that she loves you. She married me for my money. Well, what if she did? This is New York, isn't it? What do you want? I want never to see her again. All right. I say, Ben. Will you go down and see your father with me in the morning? Oh, sure. As a matter of fact, I know he's going to help you out for a while anyway. I talked to him right after the crash. Oh, I'm very grateful for that, Ben. I wish you'd do me a favor in return. What's that? Take Nancy back. Did she ask it? No. And she never will. Good night, Ben. See you in the morning. Good night, Norman. Good morning. Oh, good morning. What can I do for you? I'm looking for position. Oh, well, uh, have you had any experience? <laughs> well, I really haven't. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, good morning, Miss Prentice. I'm so glad to see you. Good morning. Let me see that little brown hat in the window. Well, of course, Miss Prentice. Why, hello, Nancy. Hello, Germain. No, I don't like this hat at all. What sort of work do you do? Well, I... I thought I might sell something. Had any experience? Oh, yes. I've worked at the Junior League Fair, and I've, um... I can ride very well. Shorthand? Uh, no, on a horse. Next.
Nancy. Nancy. Where the deuce have you been? Mm, I've been out of town visiting. You're a liar. <laughs> I know it. How about a little dinner with me? Well, I've dined then. Uh, uh, Joe, what? come on. I've just been talking to the doctor. I suppose you know what's the matter with you? Great, isn't it? Congratulations. Congratulate Norman. Does he know that he's to become a father? No. And I don't want him to, Ben. Promise me. Well, no, girl. now, Ben, promise. Or else I'll run away again. Well, why shouldn't you tell him he'd be tickled to death? I'll tell you why. I don't want to get together with Norman again. Just on the count of a baby. Then you do want to get together with him? That's not the point. No? No. If ever I do go back to Norman, it's got to be because he wants me. Oh, I know, that sounds noble and all that, but... I really mean it, Ben. Will you promise? Yes. What about your mother? Well, I don't want her to know either. But that's all right, though. She's going to live in Paris for a while. It's cheaper. Ben, will you do something else for me? For instance? Will you lend me enough money to have the baby with? Well, now, I don't know. Is it uh, going to be a big baby? The sky above and all the earth below, darling. Why I'm so in love and why I love you so. Oh, all right, all right. A rose and a down. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gracious me. What's the matter, darling? Why are you joking like that? Come along, my beautiful baby. Look at that. No, darling, that's a bad boy. Show mommy your dimple, darling. <gasps> Gracious. Oh, you're so beautiful. And you're so ridiculous. And I love you so. Oh, I love you so. Oh, hello, Cora. You're late. I've got to run. Hello there, Mr. Norman. How are you, Say hello, Cora. Say hello. And tell her you've kept Mother awake all night, you bad boy. Cora, I'll be back about six. Will you be here and watch those? There's the money for the ice bill on the mantelpiece. Now, darling, no, no, you be a good boy. You fat head, Mama will give you a sock in the nose. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Cora. Goodbye. I'll take care of him. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Miss Gifford, but there was a terrible jam in the subway. That's quite all right, but don't let it happen again. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Sterno. Uh, you missed, um... Courtney, number 289. Oh, yes. Uh, this is your first month with us, Miss Courtney? Uh, yes, Mr. Sterno. Well, don't forget that uh, when you've been with us for 50 years, you'll be eligible to receive the Sterner Gold Medal. No, I can hardly wait. Good. <laughs> well, how do you feel, Mama? Great, then. Take it easy for a while. How is the summer there? Ah, oh, he's awfully cute. What a terrible nuisance. Well, if there are any questions you want to ask me about the care and feeding of children, just come right up to the office. Thank you, Doctor. 
I'll remember that. Ben. Yes? Have you seen Norman lately? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact. How did he seem? Why? Well, I'll tell you. He's been on my mind an awful lot lately. Is he happy? Not particularly. Say anything about me? Mm, not that I remember. I got some sort of a feeling that he's in trouble. If I could just see him. You know what I mean. It might be a very good idea. Here's the thing, Ben. I thought this whole thing out. And I'd like to go back to Norman. I gave him a pretty raw deal. You might tell him that. It's just that... Ben... I can't beg him to take me back. <sighs> you know I'm not any good at begging. Do you want me to go with you? No. This is something I've got to do alone. Thanks, Ben. But, uh, I've got to do this by myself. Better do it soon. Why? I just think it would be a good idea. Ben, i tell you what you could do. You might wait in the street outside Norman's hotel with a net and some arnica. Who for? <laughs> for little Nancy and her big pride-swallowing act. I've got a hunch it's going to be an awful flop. I had to come back again. This tape isn't right. Oh, really, madam? That's too bad. Let me see it. I don't see why you can't get things right. This is the third time I've had to bring this back. Well, I'm sure we can fix it for you. Would you just step this way, please? There, that's better. I'm sure it'll be all right now, madam. Well, it better be, and I shall want it this evening. You shall have it this evening. Thank you. Hello, men. Hello, Norman. Hello, Nancy. Anything I can do for you? I didn't know. Oh, you didn't? Nancy, could you show me something in an evening coat? Something rather light? Why, well, yes, I think so. Will you just step this way, please? I'll wait here. All right. Oh, no, no, no. Let me, um, let me see that one. This one? What do you think? Are you going to marry Norman? I came here to buy a coat, my dear, not to discuss Norman. Are you going to marry Norman? I really haven't quite made up my mind. Perhaps I shall. Let me see some others. Has Norman asked you? Of course. Any objection? No, except that I should hate to be married for my money. Yes. So did Norman. That's quite true. Still, it might be rather difficult to prove in a divorce court. Oh, I don't think there'll be any trouble about a divorce. It's not bad. Let me see it. Norman could always go to Reno, I suppose. Not if I wanted to fight the case. Not if I offered to go back and live with him. You might try that once. Yes, I think I shall. I wouldn't, unless you want to be thrown out into the street. The way he threw you out? When? When he married me. How do you like this little number? Have you seen anything of your friend DeWitt lately? He was really very fond of you at one time. He told me all about your little affair. 
You're a lovely girl, aren't you? Yes and no. I think I'll take this one. You haven't been seeing so much of the witch yourself, have you? That little climber. It really won't do you any good to go to Norman about my affair with him either. I don't think that would be necessary. No? Why not? You're not going to marry Norman. You don't think so? And why? He doesn't love you. He loves me. Listen. I'm listening. Norman does love me. And if I make up my mind to marry him, and you get in my way again... Yes? You dirty little rat. Excuse me, Miss Prentice, is this a charge? Come in. Why did you leave the store this afternoon, Norman? I couldn't stay. I didn't know you were working there. Oh, I've been there about a month now. I didn't have any idea things were as bad as that with you. It wasn't bad. No, it couldn't have been as bad as being married to me. It wasn't so bad being married to you. Needn't have been, perhaps. It just didn't work out. Ever since you left me, I've thought about it. A lot. So have I. I loved you. I expected too much. You know, Nancy, as I look back, I can only remember one or two moments of tenderness. All the rest were bitter and hard. I know. So it's best it's over. It's too late. Norman, is it too late to tell you that I know what a fool I was about to wit? You know all about the wit me. Yes. I would have told you. I want to tell you everything about me, Norman. I want you to know that I realize what a mess I made of everything. How terribly unfair to you I was. I want you to know that because I want another chance. I want to be your wife again. Why? Because I love you. And it isn't too late. Unless you don't love me anymore. That's the only thing that could keep us apart. That's what I came to find out. Oh, no. Come in. You were right, Norman. It is too late. much in a year, have you? Well, I have. And I've learned more this evening. Goodbye, Norman. I'll call you in the morning. No, that won't be necessary. Just send me a cable to the boat. Really? I have a certain amount of pride. Myself. Goodbye, Norman. And I hope you two will be very... Very unhappy.
I'm not going to manage you, man. I'm so glad. Oh, Norman. I'm so glad. Well, you won't be getting very much of a fellow. <laughs> there are times when I don't think I'm so wonderful myself. We're older, Norman. Yes. Funny, isn't it, the way things change? Remember how I used to talk before we got married? Mm. Of what I was going to do? Remember the cravat building? Do you want to see it? See what? The cravat building. Cravat building? I didn't want us to start off wrong again, Norman. I wanted you to want me back. Not just take me back. I want you. 